respected moderators um, all of my uh, teacher and all of my senior and junior colleagues uh, assalamu alaikum and very good morning for this morning session presentation so i am dr shubhan rahman and fcbs cardiology student today i will present the 2020 2021 eac guideline for the management of valvular heart disease uh, eac is established in 1950 uh, and after that they are uh, doing the research uh, in cardiovascular field and in every two or three year letter they publish their guideline and <coughs> they published the management of valvular heart disease guideline in 2017 first and this is the another edition of the of this guideline of management of valvular heart disease the, those name are the authors of the task group member and <coughs> This is a, actually this is a very large guideline. So if you mm -hmm. cover all these things, I'll just cover the general consideration and aortic valvular disease, that aortic regurgitation and aortic stenosis, and tricuspid valvular disease, that is tricuspid regurgitation mm -hmm. and stenosis. Before going to the uh, main presentation, I just I want to uh, recap the ESC classes of recommendation. That is, uh, <coughs> there is a three classes of recommendation. Class one, which is a recommended and indicated as there is a clear evidence uh, that uh, the treatment procedure or is beneficial or useful or effective <clears throat> and class 3 is not recommended where there is a evidence that the treatment or procedure is not useful or effective in between class 1 and class 3 there is a class 2 where there is a conflicting evidence and or divergent of option about the usefulness and efficacy and it is also divided in two parts So class two A where we should be considered and class two B where we may be considered. So it is the initial decision. Again, the level of evidence if the data comes from the multiple randomized control trial or meta analysis, that is level of evidence A, and it is said B when data is comes from the single randomized trial or large non-randomized study. If the data is collected from the small study, registry, or retrospective study, then the level of evidence is C. Uh, ESC uh, for the management of the valvular heart disease. ESC uh, advise uh, a heart valve center. <coughs> This heart valve center have the uh, heart, <coughs> uh, should have the heart team where there is a clinical cardiologist, interventional cardiologist, cardiac surgeon, and imaging specialist available all the time. And their service will run in 24 hour and seven day manner. Mm -hmm. And this heart valve center should have some facility, like multimodality imaging, the including the echocardiography, cardiac computed tomography, cardiac magnesis resistance, and nuclear medicine. This heart valve should have outpatient and a follow-up management team. So, if any patient comes with a suspected valvular problem, that at first we will evaluate the patient, and patient may comes in the cardiology outdoor may comes with the directly or most of the patient is it comes from the referring from the primary care physician so initially we will do the clinical evaluation and we'll run some uh, <coughs> test a uh, non invasive test mostly and we will do echocardiography most of the time we prefer the trans thoracic echo but if we think there is a uh, need of trans esophageal then we can do and we can do some other modalities also after that when the full diagnosis is established then i will refer the patient to specialized heart evaluation team there is of not only cardiologist there is also cardio surgeon cardio cardiovascular surgeon cardiac imaging specialist and cardiac anesthesiologist they will assess the local resource and they will uh, they will uh, think about the risk benefit ratio and they will propose a, a treatment option for the patient So ESC uh, recommended some non-invasive strategy for the evaluation. Um, number one is echocardiography, mostly the transthoracic echocardiography. But when there is a image is not clear, or there is a possibility of defective endocarditis or thrombus, then it's better to do the trans esophageal echocardiography. And sometimes we need to, uh, as the advanced technology, the 3D uh, echo is available, so it it uh, gives a good view of valve. in 3d echocardiography and some asymptomatic patient may need stay in echo and some other uh, evaluation study include stress testing cardiac magnesis test computed tomography sinusoscopy 
ESC uh, advise some invasive facility like coronary angiography and cardiac catheterization. So there are uh, now I will say some uh, recommendation and uh, <coughs> when we will do the uh, coronary angiography in a patient of valvular heart disease. Coronary angiography is recommended before doing valve surgery in patient who has severe valvular disease and any of the following. If the, there is previous history of cardiovascular disease, suspected myocardial ischemia, left ventricular systolic dysfunction, men greater than 40 years of age or woman of postmenopausal, and one or more cardiovascular risk factors. At that time, we will do a coronary angiography before doing valve surgery. And coronary angiography is recommended in the evaluation of severe secondary mitral regurgitation. All are class one indication. Regarding treatment of um, my, uh, coronary uh, ischemic heart disease or coronary artery disease, if any patient is having aortic, mitral, or tricuspid valve pathology and needs surgery at that time, and coronary artery diameter stenosis is greater than 70%, <laughs> class one recommendation is for coronary artery bypass graft. And if a, but if any patient is undergo transcatheter aortic valve implantation at that time, PCI should be considered, and and this is a class two A indication. Now the atrial fibrillation with valvular heart disease, and uh, <coughs> regarding anticoagulation, ESC advice for stroke prevention in a patient who is eligible for oral anticoagulant or newer oral anticoagulant will prefer <coughs> this uh, anticoagulant over vitamin K antagonist in patient with aortic stenosis aortic rigor and mitral rigor situation, but not for the mitral stenosis. It's a class one indication. Use of newer oral anticoagulant in a patient with mitral stenosis is a class three indication. So it should not be done. <coughs> now, uh, sometimes we do some uh, surgical uh, techniques, uh, just left atrial appendix closure in patient of a high thromboembolic risk. So if any patient with high thromboembolic risk with atrial fibrillation chart versus 2 score greater than 2 during valve surgery, at that time, a left atrial appendix closure should be considered. This is a class 2A indication. KSC also advise some endocarditis prophylaxis uh, when patient having the prosthetic valve or any prosthetic material used during valve surgery or previous history of infective endocarditis. And we will continue the uh, rheumatic fever prophylaxis. Uh, after first attack of echotrimatic fever of any patient with established rheumatic heart disease. Here, ESC advised to take benzathine penicillin 1.2 million international unit every three to four weekly over 10 years. And the duration may be very according to the patient exposure and severity. Any patient un will undergo a surgery. We, before doing surgery, we have to do a surgical risk assessment. So there are uh, two score uh, available now. That is predicted risk of mortality. That is PROMI score, which is uh, established by the Society of Thoracic Surgeons, and Euro Score Two, the European System for Cardiac Operation Risk Evaluation. So uh, those are actually uh, those two score uh, actually is individualized for the different uh, valve surgery. So if any patient doing uh, mitral valve surgery, their score will be different than patient doing the aortic valve surgery. If, and this score is very much essential to take the decision. Either we will do the uh, operation or we will do uh, any uh, intervention. <laughs> now I'll go to the recommendation. So I, first I will say the aortic uh, uh, regurgitation. And in this guideline, they only focus on the management part. And they do not say anything when we'll say uh, the uh, mild, moderate, or severe aortic regurgitation. That's J give the recommendation regarding the treatment option of aortic regurgitation. So, <clears throat> regarding the echocardiogram criteria of definition, the severe aortic uh, valve regurgitation, uh, they, <clears throat> they advise some qualitative, semi-quantitative, and quantitative parameter to assess the valvular severity. So, in, <clears throat> in qualitative parameter, it includes valve morphology, color flow regurgitation, jet area, Continuous wave signal or regurgitation uh, jet and other. So, if the patient is having a dense color flow signal, abnormal flail valve, 
large central jet and holodiastric flow reversal in the descending area, <coughs> descending uh, aorta, then we can say this is a severe aortic regurgitation. Semi quantitative measure include anal contractor width greater than six and pressure half life less than 200 milliseconds. And quantitative measure include the effective regurgitation orifice and regurgitation volume. We need to assess overall effect of the cardiac chamber, that is LV dilatation. Now, uh, the indication for surgery in severe aortic regurgitation. So when we will do surgery in aortic regurgitation? In any patient with symptomatic patient, regardless of LV function, we will do the surgery, that is class one indication. So symptomatic severe uh, aortic regurgitation, we will do the surgery. But in asymptomatic patient, uh, <coughs> if the left ventricular and systolic diameter greater than 50 millimeter, or left ventricular and systolic diameter greater than 25 millimeter per meter square body surface area, or resting left ventricular ejection fraction below 50 percent, then in case of aortic regurgitation, we will do the surgery in asymptomatic patient. And if any patient is having coronary artery disease and patient need to do the coronary artery bypass graft, then we will do the surgery. That is also a class one indication. So in uh, aortic uh, regurgitation, sometimes uh, th there are some uh, aorta problem that is uh, aortic root problem or a tubular ascending aortic aneurysm. At that time, uh, <coughs> we need to do the uh, surgery. So here, valve sparing aortic root replacement is recommended in young patient with aortic root dilatation if performed in experience center and the, uh, durable results are expected. So in case of dilatation of the aorta, when the SND uh, aortic surgery is recommended, if patient with Marfan syndrome who is having aortic root disease with the maximal ascending aorta diameter greater than 50 mm. So in Marfan syndrome, greater than 50 millimeter as dilated aorta, we will do surgery. That is a class one indication. There are some uh, uh, class two indication regarding the aortic problem. So if any patient aortic ascending aorta diameter is greater than 55 millimeter, we will do surgery. And if any patient where ascending aorta diameter greater than 45, but patient is having Marfan syndrome with additional risk factor, then we will prefer surgery. And if the ascending aorta diameter greater than 50 millimeter in presence of bicuspid aortic valve, at that time is better to do surgery. That is a class 2A indication. So this is the uh, simplest flowchart. So any patient with aortic regurgitation, if there is ascending aorta, enlargement of the ascending aorta, we will do surgery. And if there is a uh, no enlargement, but severe aortic regurgitation with symptom, we will do surgery. If asymptomatic patient, again, left ventricular ejection fraction below 50 and left ventricular end systolic diameter greater than 50 millimeter, we will do surgery. <clears throat> now I will say the recommendation regarding the aortic uh, stenosis. Here, uh, it is not also a recommendation moderate severe aortic regurgitation, but when the valve area is less than one centimeter square, along with velocity greater than four millimeter per four meter per second, and valve mean gradient greater than forty meter per second um, millimeter per mercury, at that time we will do we will uh, classify as a severe aortic stenosis. In case of the <coughs> evaluation of the severe uh, aortic stenosis. Sometimes uh, it's happened that uh, we uh, there is uh, some area gradient or velocity mismatch. So we are getting the valve area less than one, but it may happen the velocity or the pressure gradient is not meeting the criteria that uh, velocity is less than four and pressure gradient is less than 40. So at that time, uh, what we need to do, we need to uh, define the flow status. The flow status means we'll just check the stroke volume index. If the stroke volume index is greater than 35, uh, that is uh, normal. And if the stroke volume index is less than 35, and that is <coughs> abnormal or low stroke volume. Along with that, we have to consider left ventricular ejection fraction. If the patient is low, low flow, that is low stroke volume, along with left ventricular ejection fraction below 50%, that indicates this patient may have concomitant uh, other uh, cardiac muscle problem, due, maybe due to uh, 
coronary artery disease, or this uh, muscle problem may be due to uh, valvular heart disease also. So at that time, uh, we need to do the dobutamine stressing. <clears throat> In dobutamine stress, it will help us to uh, define the, is, is either it is severe aortic stenosis or pseudo severe aortic stenosis. If uh, we will give the dobutamine in that patient, then we will assess the aortic valve area, valve gradient, and pressure gradient. If the valve area is uh, normal, but the pressure and the, uh, uh, velocity, valve velocity and pressure is increasing, yes, that it indicates uh, that this is a severe aortic stenosis. But in case of uh, pseudo severe, after dobutamine, aortic valve area may normal or may increase, but the pressure and velocity. <clears throat> pressure does not rise above 40 millimeter, uh, millimeter mercury and velocity does not rise above four uh, millimeter uh, four centimeter per sec. So at that time, it is classified as pseudo severe aortic stenosis. In these two patients, uh, a severe aortic stenosis patient will be benefited from intervention. Now the recommendation or indication for intervention in symptomatic aortic stenosis. <clears throat> in symptomatic uh, aortic stenosis, Intervention is recommended uh, where there is a severe high gradient aortic stenosis that mean gradient greater than 40, peak velocity greater than 4, and valve area less than 1. This is a class 1 indication. And intervention is also recommended uh, in symptomatic patient with severe low flow, that is stroke volume index less than 35, low gradient, that is pressure less than 40 millimeter, aortic stenosis with reduced ejection fraction, and evidence of flow result. This is also a class one a indication. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, it, it is not possible to measure the uh, area of the aortic valve. So at that time, we can take help from the other imaging modality. Coronary CT or calcium scoring may help in this time. Uh, so intervention should be considered in symptomatic patient with low flow, low gradient, severe aortic stenosis with reduced ejection fraction without flow result, particularly when coronary uh, <coughs> cardiac CT calcium scoring confirm severe aortic stenosis. This is also class two indication. Now, in case of the asymptomatic patient, intervention is recommended in asymptomatic patient with severe aortic stenosis and left ventricular systolic dysfunction without another cause. And intervention is also recommended in asymptomatic patient with severe aortic stenosis and demonstrable symptom on exertion. Or, or, or symptom on exercise testing. So in asymptomatic patient, if we do the exercise testing, and if it is positive, that is also a class one indication. So <clears throat> there are some other uh, class two A indication. I will not uh, go there. So regarding the aortic valve treatment option, actually there is two type of treatment option. Uh, that is, uh, uh, transcatheter aortic valve implantation or surgical aortic valve implantation. But if any patient uh, is having the higher surgical risk, previous uh, history of cardiac surgery, older age, severe frailty, and uh, uh, so at that time is better to, uh, or a sequel possibility of the sick, uh, patient may suffer from uh, chest uh, radiation, or selling aortic uh, aorta, or high likelihood of severe patient prosthetic mismatch at that time, we will prefer transcatheter aortic valve replacement uh, rather than surgical aortic valve replacement. And in patient of significant multivessel coronary artery disease and severe primary mitral legal disease, severe tricuspid valve disease, significant dilatation on aneurysm of the ascending aorta, and septal hypertrophy requiring myoruptomy. So in those cases, we always do, try to do the surgical aortic valve replacement. So this, uh, there is a, some uh, class one indication that a aortic valve surgery should be done in aortic heart valve center with, uh, uh, with proper expertise uh, people. And they are also recommended, a surgical aortic valve replacement is recommended in younger patient who has low risk for the surgery. Again, they, uh, how we will calculate by Society of Thoracic Surgeon Chrome or Eurosport II, and in those patients, we can do the uh, surgical aortic valve replacement. But patient who, who is 
a high uh, prom or euro score two score that is greater than 80 percent mortality and a patient is older is uh, there is a class one recommendation for transcatheter aortic valve implantation and another thing is that surgical or uh, transcatheter aortic valve pressure recommended for the remaining patient according to the clinical anatomical and procedural characteristics and the, those will be uh, divided by those decisions will be taken by heart valve team if, if any patient undergoing coronary artery bypass graft, then it is better to do surgical aortic valve replacement. It is a class one indication. So uh, here is the simplest uh, flowchart for the management. And here, <coughs> just uh, here uh, I'm just flowchart for a heart valve team evaluation and who will do a surgical, who will do the transcatheter aortic valve replacement. I will not uh, go this slide. Now I will say some uh, recommendation regarding the tricuspid regurgitation. Again, uh, in tricuspid, in this guideline, there is a no uh, uh, <coughs> criteria when we'll say uh, mild, moderate, severe, but they uh, give some uh, uh, parameter uh, how we'll assess the severity of tricuspid regurgitation. Like mitral uh, um, aortic regurgitation, here are some also qualitative, semi-quantitative, and quantitative parameters. Qualitative parameter uh, include when <coughs> the tricuspid valve morphology, color flow, jet, continuous wave signal, semi quantitative uh, include vena contracta, visa radius, hepatic growth inflow, and tricuspid inflow. And quantitative parameter include effective regurgitant orifice area and regurgitant volume. And uh, in the echo, we will always see the overall enlargement of heart chamber, that is, enlargement of right ventricle, uh, right atria, and inferior vena cava. So if, uh, by using this uh, parameter, we will assess the severity of tricuspid regurgitation. Now the uh, management of the uh, tricuspid regurgitation. Any patient is having the tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, if uh, we, we know that tricuspid regurgitation is mostly secondary tricuspid regurgitation. In secondary tricuspid regurgitation, if any patient is planned for surgery, like for the left heart surgery, that is a patient of mitral stenosis or mitral regurgitation. If we plan for surgery, at that time we should check the tricuspid valve annulus. And if there is annular dilatation, we will do tricuspid valve repair or replacement. Or and again, if if there is a <coughs> secondary tricuspid regurgitation and associated with RV dysfunction. And now I will see the recommendation on indication for intervention in tricuspid valve disease. So surgery is recommended in patient with severe tricuspid regurgitation undergoing left-sided valve surgery. This is a class one indication, and surgery is recommended in asymptomatic patient with isolated severe primary tricuspid regurgitation without severe RV dysfunction. So in primary Isolated primary tricuspid regurgitation will do surgery without severe RV dysfunction. Now I will say some uh, recommendation regarding the tricuspid stenosis as it is a very rare disease. So in guideline there is only there is two or three slides. So this is uh, surgery is recommended in a symptomatic patient with severe tricuspid stenosis and surgery is recommended in patient who has severe tricuspid regurgitation undergoing left-sided valve intervention. So any patient of left-sided uh, valve problem if undergoing surgery, all the time you have need to do surgery if there is a problem in the tricuspid valve. So what's new in this guideline apart from 2017 guideline? So, <coughs> so in this guideline, uh, uh, just I am seeing what is the new uh, in Previous guideline, newer oral anticoagulant is considered the alternative to vitamin K antagonist in patient with aortic stenosis or aortic regression or mitral regression presenting with uh, actual fibrillation. So that was class two indication. But now they said <coughs> for stroke prevention, we will use uh, oral anticoagulant or newer oral anticoagulant in aortic stenosis, aortic and mitral regression. Now this is a class one indication. And previously, in management of severe aortic regurgitation in 2017 guideline, they only include the surgery is indica in, <coughs> indicated for an asymptomatic patient with low ejection fraction. That was a class one indication, but class two indication 
was surgery is considered in asymptomatic patient with low EF with severe LV dilatation. That was left ventricular and systolic diameter and diastolic diameter greater than 70 or end systolic diameter greater than 50. But in this new guideline, surgery is recommended in asymptomatic patient with left ventricular in systolic diameter greater than 50 or left ventricular in systolic diameter greater than 25 millimeter per meter square body surface area uh, or resting uh, left ventricular ejection fraction is 50 percent. So uh, there is a uh, they omit the left ventricular in diastolic diameter here. As well as this is a previously that was a class two, now it is a class one indication. And they also take the uh, uh, previously uh, in severe aortic regurgitation guideline, the heart valving discussion is recommended in selected patient who is aortic valve repair may feasible alternative to the valve replacement. Now, uh, aortic valve repair uh, may be considered in uh, in patient who is experience center. This is a class two B indication. Another uh, so in previous guideline that is a twenty a seventeen guideline uh, aortic valve repair using reimplantation or remodeling with aortic aneuploplasty technique that was a class one indication if any patient is aortic regurgitation with aortic root dilatation. But now the valve sparing aortic root replacement, that is, we will not uh, do any valve surgery here, but the valve sparing aortic root replacement is recommended in young patient with aortic uh, root dilatation if performed in experience center and durable results are expected. That is class one indication now. In case of the uh, recommendation on uh, indication of asymptomatic aortic stenosis uh, patient, in previously, uh, the intervention is indicated in symptomatic patient with severe high gradient aortic stenosis patient where the gradient was greater than 40 and peak velocity is greater than 4. But there is no mention in a valve area at that time. But here, the intervention is recommended in symptomatic patient with severe high gradient aortic stenosis, the mean gradient greater than 40, peak velocity greater than 40, and as well as valve area less than 1 or 0.6 cm per meter square body surface area. There are some other differences also. Just I'll uh, not I'll go there. And regarding the treatment option, uh, previously surgical aortic valve replacement is recommended in patient at a low surgical risk and no other risk factor are uh, not included in those uh, scores that frailty, porcelain aorta, sequelae of the chest radiation. But here, uh, they use, previously they use uh, uh, Euro 1 score and uh, logistic Euro on a score. But they in this guideline, they uh, omit that score. They only advise to check the promise score or Euro uh, score 2. <coughs> and if a, 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 task, a catheter aortic valve implantation is recommended, who is not suitable for surgical aortic valve replacement uh, by the heart valve, that is class 1 indication. But here, the trans catheter aortic valve uh, is recommended in older patient. Just they specify was the greater than 75 years or any patient with higher risk of um, greater than 8% risk of perioperative mortality or unsuitable for uh, surgery. So uh, the, uh, there are some other differences in uh, in case of uh, tricuspid, uh, primary tricuspid regurgitation, previously they said a surgery should be considered in asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic patient with severe isolated primary tricuspid regurgitation and progressive RV dilatation and or uh, deterioration of RV function. But in this guideline, surgery is considered in asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic patient, isolated severe tricuspid regurgitation with RV dilatation. We, you know, who are appropriate for the surgery. So here, uh, they consider only RV dilatation without uh, um, assessing the RV function. We can do the surgery. This is a class 2 A recommendation. Uh, sir, uh, and in case of the secondary tricuspid um, regurgitation, um, this, uh, the surgery is now surgery is uh, considered in patient with severe tricuspid regurgitation with or without prior left heart surgery who has symptomatic or having RV dilatation in absence of 
uh, in absence of severe RV or left ventricular dysfunction and severe pulmonary vascular disease. That is now a uh, class uh, 2A indication. So there are some changes from the uh, previous guideline. So <clears throat> that's the, uh, I'm now towards the end of my presentation. So uh, alveolar heart disease uh, should be managed by a specialized heart clinic with multidisciplinary heart uh, valve team. And non-invasive and invasive investigation is always necessary according to the patient needs. If the patient is uh, symptomatic, a non-invasive investigation may be, uh, may be uh, optimum. But in case of asymptomatic patients, sometimes we may need to do the invasive investigation. Uh, in asymptomatic, uh, appropriate timing of the surgery is very much crucial. See, if we do the early surgery, uh, uh, it, it may we may uh, endanger the patient life by surgical risks. And, and uh, so appropriate timing of the surgery is very much crucial. And symptomatic patient should be treated first. Okay, asymptomatic patient should be kept in regular follow-up and may need more investigation. So this is the end of my presentation. And uh, thank you everybody for patient hearing. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sohan, for your nice and elaborating presentation. Now I am welcome the uh, students uh, first to join the discussion. Actually, Dr. Shobhan elaborated the everything. Moreover, you can discuss the topics. Students first, then faculty are welcome for join the discussion. The students. Yes, I'm Dr. M. T. S. N. May I ask a question to the presenter? Uh, yes. Uh, sir, my question is... Okay, sir. Uh, sir uh, my question is, uh, what is the definition of flow reserve in case of dopamine stress echocardiography? Uh, Dr. Shabon. Yes. Uh, so, actually, uh, when we will uh, do the dopamine uh, uh, stress test, actually, uh, uh, in case of the aortic stenosis evaluation, when their valve size area is less than one, uh, but there is a uh, gradient is uh, uh, less than uh, four centimeter square, or pressure is uh, less than 40 millimeter mercury. So there is a uh, area gradient mismatch. So at that time, there is a two possibility that maybe some uh, patient is having uh, some uh, cardiac muscle problem, maybe due to valve problem, or maybe due to uh, other problem. So at that time, we will do the dobutamine uh, stress echo. And in dobutamine stress echo, we will as again assess uh, three parameters, the valve area and the uh, valve velocity and pressure gradient. If the valve uh, in both case, uh, that is a uh, true severe aortic stenosis or pseudo-severe, valve area will be set. But in pseudo-severe uh, aortic stenosis, gradient will be increased. Uh, a gradient will be more than uh, 40 millimeter mercury as well as velocity is more than 4. Uh, but in uh, <coughs> pseudo severe, the gradient will be the uh, normal or decrease, like the gradient will be less than 40 uh, millimeter and velocity will be less than 4. So, uh, in pseudo severe case, actually, patient will not benefit from aortic uh, valve replacement. So, uh, that is written in, the, in this uh, guide. Dr. Shabon, Yes, sir. 
এই پیشنটের কিছু লিখেছে মানে স্যার স্যার এখানে যেটা লেখা আছে স্যার এওটি ভালভুলার ডিজিজ হলে স্যার আমরা ইজেকশন ফ্র্যাকশন এবং স্যার স্ট্রোক ভলিউম ইনডেক্স দেখব যদি স্ট্রোক ভলিউম ইনডেক্স বিলো 35 হয় দ্যাট ইজ আ লো ফ্লো ফ্লো অলওয়েজ এ ডিটারমিনড বাই দ্য স্ট্রোক ভলিউম ইনডেক্স এজ ওয়েল এজ ইজেকশন ফ্র্যাকশন আমরা দেখব স্যার যখন লো ফ্লো থাকবে সাথে হচ্ছে ইজেকশন ফ্র্যাকশন কম থাকবে তখন স্যার আমরা যদি আমরা চিন্তা করি দিস প্রবলেম ইউ ডিউ টু ভালভুলার অর this may be problem due to other associated um, disease so tokhon sir amra oi tobotomy stress ko korbo sir eta ache kintu flow chart e sir erokom low flow eta lekha nai sir eta iate le ইন্ডিকেটেড আর যদি আমরা চিন্তা করি যে ইজেকশন ফ্র্যাকশন এবং স্যার স্ট্রোক ভলিউম ইনডেক্স ভেলোসিটি এগুলো যদি টোবিটন দেওয়ার পরে না পারে তাহলে আমরা কার্ডিও মায়োপ্যাথি হয়ে গেছে চিন্তা করে স্যার এটা ইন্ডিকেটেড হবে না স্যার তো স্যার সিজার তুই কল কর আমি হসপিটালে আছি ও এটা কিন্তু তোমার তোমার ফ্লো চার্টে কিন্তু তুমি দেখিয়েছো ফ্লো চার্টে কিন্তু সবন দেখিয়েছো যে যখন তোমার এরকম মিসম্যাচ হচ্ছে যে ভালভ এরিয়া দেখা যাচ্ছে যে অনের নিচে কিন্তু তোমার গ্রেডিয়েন্ট বা তোমার গ্রেডিয়েন্ট চল্লিশের কম বা ভ্যালুসিটি ফোর মিলি ফোর মিটার সেকেন্ডের কম তখন যে ফ্লো চার্টটা তুমি দেখালে তখন যে তার স্ট্রোক ভলুম মাপা হলো তখন যে থার্টি ফাইভের নিচে যখন স্ট্রোক ভলুম হলো সেটা কিন্তু লো ভলুম বলছে ওরা লেখা আছে তো লো ভলুম এবং যখন গ্রেডিয়েন্ট মিসমেস করলো যখন গ্রেডিয়েন্ট চল্লিশের নিচে আসলো কিন্তু ভালভ এরিয়া একের কম তখন তো সেটা দেখালো লো গ্রেডিয়েন্ট তারপর তুমি ডোবুটামিন স্ট্রেস করে দেখলা যে হ্যাঁ ভালভে ভালভ এরিয়ার সাথে গ্রেডিয়েন্টও বাড়লো গ্রেডিয়েন্ট বাড়লো এবং ভ্যালোসিটিও বাড়লো তো আছে তো তোমার এটা তুমি না বলছো কেন হ্যাঁ শোভন এটা এটা বলছো তো প্রোগ্রাম because from 2019 the tabi is indicated in uh, when a sds score less than 4 especially low risk patient initially tabi was indicated in the extreme high risk patient that is means sds score more than 15 then it is reduced intermediate risk score it is more than 10 then holo or the low risk it is is 4 সুতরাং এই টাবির ক্ষেত্রে সবচেয়ে বড় ইম্প্রুভমেন্ট হয়েছে এখন ইভেন লো রিক্স কেসে যেখানে লেস দেন ফোর সেখানেও টাবি ক্লাস ওয়ান ইন্ডিকেশনে নিয়ে আসছে ইন অ্যাপ্রোপ্রিয়েস এটা সিভিয়ার ডিজেনারেটিভ সিমটোমেটিক অ্যাডভোকেশনের ক্ষেত্রে এটা সবচেয়ে বড় কারণ হলো যে টেবার ইজ গোয়িং আপ ওভার দ্য এস এ ভি আর ইন ইন রিয়েল ওয়ার্ল্ড সিনারিও অ্যান্ড ইট ইজ চেঞ্জ ইন টু থাউজেন্ড Thank you, Shobhan, for your nice, elaborate presentation. Uh, thank you for... Sir, may I add... Uh, for, uh, sir, for students, for students, you have to consider two things. First of all, actually, in uh, aortic valve, uh, aortic valve stenosis, in aortic valve stenosis management, the guideline first mentioned the indication of intervention. So... Intervention means two, that Pradeep uh, told that uh, either sever, surgical aortic valve replacement or transcatheter aortic valve replacement. So first indication of intervention they mentioned, 
then they when the aortic valve aortic stenosis fulfill the criteria of uh, uh, indication of intervention then you will consider whether you go for uh, valve uh, transcatheter aortic valve replacement tav or tavr or surgical aortic valve replacement then uh, again you consider whether there is a uh, age of the patient more than 75 and a score surgical score or mortality risk as mentioned the promo score or euro score is greater so higher risk patients is more then you consider the tav um, or transcatheter aortic valve replacement or if there is a um, age is uh, less less than 75 surgical mortality score is less uh, so in those cases you can consider surgical aortic valve replacement and in intermediate case in this um, by, uh, between these two group intermediate case you have to take the heart team approach and in this group as pradeep the mentioned the tavi is or tavar is uh, coming in forward in in in, in intermediate risk also thank you even now uh, uh, i want to correct you now the tavar is indicated in low risk patient also if the valve is suitable age is suitable then it is the now class 1 indication because it is it is 16 august 2019 fda approved the uh, tavar in low risk patient is class 1 indication and now 2021 is come in the guideline Uh, thank you, Pradeep. Uh, it is a new information. Initially, TAVI was indicated for the high risk patient, older age. Now it's become for the low risk patient and young patient also can be take the TAVI. Any other faculties? Sir, I want to question. Sir, hello. TAVI indication is no valve morphology. No, no guideline. It's about such a thing. The variable valve is the morphological. Then, our that is the rheumatic valve. सिमटोमेटिक सीरियर degenerative aortic stenosis and symptomatic severe bicuspid aortic stenosis but still the rheumatic aortic stenosis is not indicated for tavar and the and the valve morphology is very important because one thing is the size our available size now 18 to 29 available size so out of size is not indicated then the coronary artery anatomy if the 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 distance between the coronary anatomy and the valve is less than 8 mm the tavar is not indicated outflow of calcification so there is some lot of uh, morphological issue where the tavar cannot be done thank you thank you uh, i have another questions for uh, presenter I have any guideline to the failure condition of the uh, morphological valvular disease? Uh, Say for mitral valvular disease or aortic valvular disease, I have any guideline the the failure status? Sir, uh, I have to know this failure. Yes, sir. The patient who has valvular disease, that is, the failure status, any guideline that is available? Is it not? The age. লেভেল যখন আমরা যখন ফোরডি এন্ট্রি করি অথবা ফেলিয়র স্ট্যাটাস দেখি যে কোন লেভেলে গেলে করতে পারবো ইজেকশন স্যার স্যার প্রথমে আমরা স্যার ইনিশিয়ালি অ্যাসেসমেন্ট করব স্যার এখানে স্যার ক্লিনিক্যাল এক্সামিনেশন সাথে স্যার ইনভেস্টিগেশন এখানে ইনভেস্টিগেশন এ স্যার ও বলেছে ও বলেছে যে এখানে ইকোকার্ডিওগ্রাফি প্যারামিটার এবং এলভি ইজেকশন ফ্র্যাকশন এগুলো মিলে জিনিসটা ডিসিশন নিতে হবে এখন প্রোবি এন্ট্রি ভাই কোনো আমার মনে হয় যে कार्डियोलजिस्ट 
ডিসিশন দিবে তারপরে স্যার এটা হার্ট ভালভ টিমে যাবে হার্ট ভালভ টিমে স্যার কার্ডিওলজিস্ট থাকবে সাথে কার্ডিও থোরাসিক সার্জন থাকবে কার্ডিয়াক অ্যানেসথেসিওলজিস্ট থাকবে স্যার এবং আদার যদি নেসেসারি হয় স্যার কোমরবিটিটি হিসেবে আদার কনসার্ন থাকতে পারে স্যার না সিম্পটমেটিক সিম্পটমেটিক তুমি যেটা দেখিয়েছো মানে গাইডলাইনে যেটা দেখিয়েছে যে সিম্পটম অ্যাসিম্পটমেটিক অ্যাউটিক রিগার্ডিজেশন অ্যাসিম্পটমেটিক সিভিয়ার অ্যাউটিক রিগার্ডিজেশনে তুমি দেখিয়েছো যে আমার কাছে এটা সহজভাবে মনে রাখার উপর আছে রুল অফ ফিফটি যদি তার যদি তার লেফট ভেন্টিকুলার এনসিস্টোলিক ডায়ামিটার লেফট ভেন্টিকুলার এনসিস্টোলিক ডায়ামিটার ইন অ্যাসিম্পটমেটিক সিভিয়ার অ্যাওটিক রিস্টোনোসিস ফিফটির বেশি হয় তারপরে তার ইজেকশন ফ্র্যাকশন এল বি ইজেকশন ফ্র্যাকশন যদি ফিফটির কম হয় এবং তারপর তুমি আর একটা দেখে দেখেছো অ্যাওটিক রুট ডায়লিটেশন সেটা যদি ফিফটির বেশি হয় এইগুলো তাদের ইন্ডিকেশন সুতরাং এখানে ইন্ডিকেশন যদি সোললি ইন্ডিকেশনের কার্ডিয়াক বায়োমার্কার্স দে ডিডেন্ট ইনক্লুড রাদার দে ইনক্লুড দা ইজেকশন ফ্র্যাকশন এই টাইম বলতে যাচ্ছ না এটাই ফেইলিয়ারের তো ইন্ডিকে মানে প্যারামিটার গুলো তুমি ওখানে ওখানে বলছো সেটা তো প্রোবিয়েন্টি কি খুব হাইলাইটেড করছো ওখানে না 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 স্যার প্রোবিয়েন্টি সেটাই এই প্রফেসর আজম আছে ম্যানেজমেন্ট রিকমেন্ড biocardiography just if the indications and findings are clean cut then we will advise aortic valve replacement and as there is no effective treatment except beta blocker for severe aortic stenosis we have nothing to do but to replace the valve or uh, nowadays also tavr next important thing in the borderline or the really the cases where the indications are not so clean cut we have to send the patient for dobutamine stress echo and this is the right technology what should be the interpretation of uh, dobutamine stress echo in plain language i am not going into the recommendation by this guideline during uh, dobutamine stress echo for evaluation of aortic stenosis two parameters are mainly important two one is stroke volume that is very uh, uh, easily determined by dobutamine stress echo or any other means of echocardiography number 1 number 2 mean gradient so two parameters one is stroke volume another one is mean gradient and we have to memorize two values one is 20 another one is 40 for stroke volume 20% is the cut off point and for the mean gradient 40 mm mercury is the cut off point three types of findings may be obtained one is there is no change in these two uh, parameters that is the stroke volume is not increased beyond 20% and the mean gradient is also not changed beyond 40 mm mercury this is end stage aortic stenosis in the form of cardiomyopathy and probably the patient will not be benefited by any means except medical management so uh, we will not recommend aortic valve replacement this is one type of finding that can be obtained another one that there may be mean gradient will be mean gradient will be less than 40 mm mercury but the stroke volume will raise beyond 20% so stroke volume will increase but the mean gradient will not increase it will remain within 40 mm mercury and this is called significant just this is called pseudo severe aortic stenosis pseudo severe pseudo severe aortic stenosis and these types of patients will not uh, uh, be appropriate for aortic valve replacement at that time but they must be under follow up and the third that may occur there will be increase in stroke volume and also there will be increase in mean gradient beyond 40 mm mercury so both the parameters may increase if there is 
increase in both the parameters, these types of patients will be benefited by aortic valve replacement. And this is the beauty of dobutamine stress ego to make the decision for the further evaluation of these types of aortic. Sir, uh, I, I have a question to the presenter. I have a, sir, I have a question to the presenter. Uh, in this guideline, is anything mentioned regarding the aortic valve, aortic valve valvoplasty in aortic stenosis patient? So may I answer, sir? Actually, sir, in this guideline, sir, balloon aortic valvotomy is uh, considered in case of hemodynamically unstable patient. And in those uh, who are awaiting for urgent high-risk non-cardiac surgery, sir, in these two conditions, hemodynamically unstable patient and urgent high-risk non-cardiac surgery. In those two cases, this guideline recommend balloon aortic valvotomy. Actually, a uh, breeze procedure. Exactly. Ex exactly. Exactly. It, it, is, it is a procedure to buy time. The right. patient is in cardiogenic shock. The patient is the acute NGF. The patient is waiting for the uh, uh, TEVR or, uh, or SAVR. To buy time, you can do the aortic valve Thank you, sir. Hello, uh, presenter, uh, sir, sir, can I ask questions? Sure, 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 thank you, sir. So, uh, thank you, the, 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 I will thank the presenter enormously because he has uh, just presented the recent case, most recent, uh, I think, journal, yes, regardless. So, my, uh, I, I, the questions are, majority the questions are from related to aortic valve and sex valve disease because the adults are more prone to have some uh, aortic and uh, tax problems due to RV failure. So my uh, intuition is about pulmonary valve because we all know the peri in periodic case, uh, we have some lot of cases of the fallow and after operation, this patient may have some RVOT uh, flow, increased flow due to PR um, and uh, also pulmonary valve restrictions. So, what is the criteria included in pulmonary valve replacement having these patients? Uh, can you uh, not, not notify all these things? pulmonary valve present aortic valve and tricuspid valve present Pulmonary valve next Sorry, 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 Miss Kutra. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. That's why I'm not sure what I'm saying. 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 আমার যেটা হলো ট্রাইকাস্ট ভালো হয়ে পড়ে ইএসসি গাইডেন্স তো দিয়েছে আমি করেন স্যার যেগুলি পাওয়া যাচ্ছে এডাল এমনি কিন্তু এই গাইডলাইনটা কিন্তু আগে দু একটা গাইডলাইনের সাথে একটু লিমিটেশন আছে এটাই এটা কিন্তু স্যার ইয়ে না ইউনিভার্সাল কভার আপ না অর্থাৎ সবাইকে এটা ইন্টু করতে পারে না হয়তো এটা আবার আসবে আর একটা গাইডলাইন আসবে এটা আরো করতে সেখানে দেখা যাচ্ছে যে যেমন যে সব পেশেন্ট সাসটেইন করে না যেমন ধরুন স্যার ট্রাইকাস্ট বি অ্যাট্রেশিয়া সাথে যে যে আমরা যেটা বাই যে পেশেন্ট বলি এটা কিন্তু দে ডাজন্ট লিভ লং তো দ্যাটস ওয়াই দে ডিডেন্ট uh, uh, they will point out the cases. What will uh, they will do uh, with their, in these cases? So, Amar Monaham, Kichu, Dito Habe, and Amade Session to Sergeant Sashe, Tate Kichu Artu Dito Habe. How will manage these cases? And as I could appreciate Pishim Kutamra, clinical cover up the conservative cover up the Pachika Tabarinam. So, I don't know Amar Monaham's session, Habe. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I want to say, Pore Amda is a Tomar Palmer of Lucian, a Jedin Aru present for Bait Amda topics, select Kuraziboni, a pediatric story for Bait. Okay. I mean, the last character is a regional sports dinner, sir. I'm with the pediatric paper, I mean, I'm a talkman. I mean, the genie present for the sir, Taka, 
আমার কথা হলো যে তারপরে